mass unemployment, mounting bankruptcies, and fears of negative interest rates. This is a nightmarish time for America's banks. The banks are in trouble because people are defaulting on their loans. If people aren't earning as much money as they were when they were working, especially small businesses, they're not paying their loans. So the banks are not getting interest payments. They're getting defaults. In fact, there was already trouble in the subprime markets before the pandemic. Both subprime credit card and auto loan defaults were rising. That will only increase with millions of people suddenly unemployed. The world's banks are also under siege because cryptocurrencies threaten to undermine banking altogether. Banks' lending activities are attracting ever less interest thanks to central bank policies, and now negative rates are on the cards. The bankers are staring into an abyss. The problem is Main Street just doesn't know it is staring into the same abyss. Even when the economy is overheating, banks are insolvent by design. The more insolvent they are, the more they fleece the sheep. It is all perfectly legal, of course. If your bank fails, it can put your financial well-being at risk. Now people are starting to realize that they have been funding compulsive gamblers with unsecured loans at perhaps 25% interest rate on their bank deposits, unsecured loans. When you realize that governments have made this all legal and that they have pushed through bail-in legislation to protect the taxpayer from bank insolvency, do you trust your government to do anything that is for your benefit? We are wearing masks, but the banks are robbing us. The financial sector is the key to the US economy. They shouldn't be, but they are because we have a bubble economy. We have an economy based on credit, based on debt. So, not people spending the money they earned, but spending the money they didn't earn, but they borrowed. This becomes clear when you look at the consumer debt numbers. Americans were already leveraged up to their eyeballs before Corona spurred a government lockdown of the economy. What is at the heart of the bubble, other than the Federal Reserve, which is pumping all the blood through the body of the economy, but it's pumping it through the heart of the banking sector. So, when you see this cardiac arrest in the banking sector, this is a sign that there's trouble brewing here when the banks are having so much trouble. The collapse of fake assets was underway well before the pandemic became the imposed subject of 90% of all communication, and half the planet was put under house arrest. It directs the anger away from the elitist banksters to some nanoparticle, and the panic-stricken public will welcome the monetary reset, which, of course, will screw them further. The banks are the problem. When you have a credit bubble when the economy is built on a foundation of debt, and then something happens to shake that foundation, you have a big problem. Gold and silver are money, everything else is credit and subject to manipulation. The Fed is doing everything it did during the last financial crisis except way bigger and way sooner. The Fed printed more money than the UK and Chinese GDPs put together in the last 50 days alone. There's deflation of products. There's inflation in food. There's more money floating around. There's no economy. There's no trade. Money is not real. The market is not real. The debt tsunami is rolling in. The derivatives pit is bottomless. No amount of bailouts by the public can fill a bottomless black hole. We bought them time with the initial bailout of the Fed, but that was all we gave them, a little time. The central banks will continue to temporize with massive pumping, guaranteeing that there be a catastrophic result. The bankers should have learned from 2008, but they didn't and proceeded to treat the market like a casino. Well, now it's time for them to take their losses. The government should say no more and let the Fed, a private bankster's cartel, after all, go bust. It'll take down a lot of zombie corporations as well as the bankster gamblers, but that'll clear the air. The public bailed out the banks in 2008. They didn't learn the lesson. Let them go bust. And let them suffer this stinging lesson, not the public. Those derivatives from 2008 were never cleared but just swept under the rug in a shoddy cleanup attempt. But you probably realize that. And now there are more derivatives. This is a financial and banking crisis, only a way worse than the 2008-2009 crisis. A financial crisis, worse than 2008, conveniently blamed on the virus. How convenient was that? It's like a plane just flew into the World Trade Towers. And whether by nature or not, we know those towers come down in a hurry. 
That's the global economy now, about to turn into dust and molten steel. Thermite or not. This is actually the opening salvo to World War III, whether the virus was natural, accidental, or intentional. The end result is a bitter fight for survival pitting man against man and nation against nation. Get yourselves ready to survive what's coming. A financial crisis occurs when disorderly asset price moves to impact the real world, people with bills or mortgages or small businesses, for example. They will default unless the Fed changes the rules. In the case of a shutdown, the shops, like exchanges, are closed, and because of social distancing, the throughput of available trade is reduced. You cannot do a better job if you only wanted to screw the GDP. This is a financial crisis, and the Fed Bank is largely to blame, but they will also print to infinity if needed. So, no matter how bad it gets for the little people, the Fed will create many more trillions of dollars and push the markets higher and higher. The hoi polloi get welfare checks, and for many, it's more than they made working, so they buy new cars, houses, eye toys, etc. Uncle Sugar, through the Fed Bank pays for it all. The big corporations continue to buy back shares, and the top 10% get richer still. If they run out, the Fed prints more and more. The masses are content, and the cities don't burn. It has worked so far for 12 years. The question now is, how long could they keep kicking the can before the whole system, the whole financial system collapses? When the banks go under, and they close their doors when there are runs on the banks, and they don't have the cash because fractional reserve banking is a fraud, and your debit cards don't work, what are working people in this country going to do? We need to address that question first. The Fed needs to be phased out. We do not have fractional reserve banking anymore, now we have fictional reserve banking after the Fed changed the reserve requirement to zero on the 26th of March 2020. It will be quite interesting to see how economic activity picks back up after things reopen. I think there may be some surprises. 1. Not all businesses are going to reopen. 2. Not all employees will be called back. 3. People are not going to flock to bars and restaurants because they will be broke, and no one wants to be around crowds in an enclosed area. 4. There is no demand pipeline for durable goods. It could be six months to a year before new car sales come off the peg. And if there is no demand, why keep auto workers on the job? 5. How much disposable income has become scared money? The states may reopen, but it may take years for consumers to backfill the financial hole this has caused. Fools don't realize that every business acts like cells that require a constant supply of oxygen to survive. An economy is a life form that is being killed by hypoxia. They cannot just switch it back on. It's becoming more and more evident to me that there isn't a pandemic cover-up. It's that the pandemic is the cover-up, the cover-up for the collapse of our financial system. Shutdowns to cover up the financial implosion, to cover up the detonation of derivatives weapons of financial mass destruction, to cover up the extension of the globalist coup. Wheels within wheels. The Fed or the Bank for International Settlements or whoever saw the waves coming said, let's make up this social distancing thing so we can shut down part of the economy and therefore mask the true symptoms of our collapse. Without some kind of disaster, the current amount of money printing would crash the markets, so we have been given fiction to hold our attention. Stop spending. Stop the bank runs. Impossible to buy precious metal. Then there's a nice fat bank holiday. And it was the virus that did it. Their art of deception tricks would even impress David Copperfield. They know if people understood that two bad recessions in a row were directly the result of bank's greed, they would have a fight on their hands to retain control. When they finally have us all turning on each other and controlled by law and technology to the point where it doesn't matter what we think or know as a society about these elites, it will be far too late. This is why Glass-Steagall was enacted after the last depression. Banks not allowed a seat at the Wall Street poker table. Commodities are only bought if you were taking physical delivery. The people never learn. Wall Street learned a long time ago how to become rich by legal embezzlements from Main Street. But Congress, Senators and Bill Clinton were wise enough to give us the Financial Modernization Act, which wiped out all of Glass-Steagall's protections to prevent another depression or worse. If we had a sound, debt-free monetary system, none of this would be happening. 
You can't print gold and silver. They are anchors. Under such an honest system, if you wanted to spend tons and tons of money on wars, infrastructure, or even hammock programs for illegal aliens, the only way to raise such funds would be through direct taxation of the citizenry. You'd have to lay hold of their assets directly. Not indirectly through insidious inflation. You would have the ultimate check and balance system against waste, fraud, and other criminal activity. With constant public audits, the people would know every time a greasy hand was reaching into their cookie jar. The corruption began when the average clueless idiot started being willing to accept paper promises, currency, in place of hard money, gold and silver coins. This is a planned controlled transition to feudalism. All independence and economic power have been surrendered to the central planner. The only way to do this was through a devastating financial crisis. The Fed is a part of a worldwide banking cartel that is already running the world. The Fed is just a tool of enslavement. So what is going on is an expansion of this enslavement both by moving debt onto the taxpayers and implementing harsher means of control over the population.